<laughs> Daniel? Hey, you guys are here as well. Hey, Alan. How long have you been there? <laughs> so today we're going to talk to you about... Yeah. <laughs> today we're going to talk about machine-to-machine -machine communication. Machine-to-machine -machine communication. Right. So when we talk about a machine, what do we mean? Okay, so when we talk about machine, what we're really talking about is two applications talking to each other. Let me give you an example, mm -hmm. right? Most of us understand, and I'm going to choose <coughs> a random major retailer that we all go to, right? So an unnamed retailer. So we have a shopping cart. Oh, I thought you were going to put JC Penney. <laughs> <laughs> it could be if you want. So we've got this retailer, you've got a shopping cart, you've ordered something online, right? Mm -hmm. What they want to do is they want to have a nice little section here on their page which shows you the status of the shipment of your order. They shipped it out via FedEx, mm -hmm. and they want to show you where it actually is. What you're describing is a classic web service. Indeed. It's a web service. What, <laughs> in Brown, <laughs> what Amazon is now going to do is they are going to make a web call over here to FedEx. Mm -hmm. right? And FedEx has exposed a web service mm -hmm that's going to get the appropriate information from the tracking number and everything and give back to Amazon a nice structured piece of data, those are curly brackets, a nice structured piece of data that Amazon can now parse and can say, oh, your package has landed in Cincinnati and is on its way to Puerto Rico. So there's a big question here though. How does Amazon know it's talking to FedEx? Yes, <laughs> this is the problem, right? So the challenge here is that much like any web access call, right, we need to have authentication, we need to have authorization. And the problem, the reason that this is different than any normal web calls, is that as people, we're intelligent. We can think for ourselves. And so when we're trying to do something and a login window pops up, we can say, it's a login window, so we log in. That's right. The machine can't. And it gets a login window and it says, what is this? And, and it breaks. Right. Right? So what we end up having to do, and one of the ways of do, can I have the blue back? <laughs> one of the ways that we fix this is we put what we call a gateway in between Amazon and FedEx. So IG, identity gateway. An identity gateway. And what this gateway is going to do is it's going to intercept this request. Mm -hmm. So it's going to come to the gateway. And now, much like a traffic cop or a security guard at the front door, it's going to say, do you have the appropriate credentials? Do you have authorization to get in? Mm -hmm. And based on that decision, it's either going to let the request continue, or it's going to send back an error back to Amazon that says insufficient credentials or something. And I'm sure many of us have seen those pages where it just shows up with an error so not available. authenticating the transaction. So we are authenticating the transaction and authorizing the transaction because it may well be that FedEx has many services yeah. and Amazon hasn't paid for the first class services, they're just getting the tracking services. So there may be 20 different API calls that you could make. Sure. And Amazon only has access to one. Only has access to one of them and the other ones need to be restricted. Yeah, but other clients do have access to them. So that's where the gateway can come in and can authorize those requests. Yep. And it knows how to authorize them based on the authentication, which will probably use something like an OAuth token, yes. which we'll get to later. We we'll, will get to that later. We'll talk about OAuth later. Don't go there yet. So yes, you were absolutely right. This is a very typical web service use case. Can you say that again? You were right. You were right. Daniel, you, you were right. <laughs> so this is a very simple, you said it's a very simple scenario. Very simple scenario. But when I think about the enterprise, FedEx could have hundreds, thousands of different services running in the back end. Mm -hmm. what, do they do the same thing back there? They could. Right? So traditionally, what ends up happening is that within the enterprise, the machine, they're, they're sort of this hodgepodge of how do they communicate with each other, uh, weird protocols, some of which are trying to connect to each other. What's beginning to happen, right? There's a new sort of technology or a new way of doing things which are called microservices. Yeah. Feel free. So FedEx may have lots of different services that comprise this FedEx 
offering. And where you're headed with this is just like you have to trans uh, to, to authenticate and authorize the transaction between FedEx and Amazon, they may actually also need to authenticate and authorize transactions between those different services. Absolutely. So you could think as an e easy example, maybe these are their different shipping hubs, the different centers, and they need to say, has the product gotten there and things like yeah. that. The challenge that you have is that these tend to be much more fine-grained than the traditional web services. Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy for FedEx to say, sure, Amazon, give me a tracking ID and I'll give you back where the package is. But down at the enterprise level, you tend to get a much more fine-grained. Right? And so it tends to be much more complex, it tends to be much bigger, mm -hmm. and there's a lot more, and we go back to what we've talked about, scale becomes an interesting problem here. Yeah, this in some ways takes scale to a completely different level, right? It does. Because before you're just talking about authenticating different users, mm -hmm. yes, I'm, I'm making this extreme, um, you could be talking about authenticating 100 million users, but for each one of those users accessing services, you could have 10x that in terms of validation across all these different services on the back end. And FedEx is only dealing here with maybe a few hundred or a few thousand customers making that web service call, whereas down here, where it's dealing with the services inside of FedEx, you may well get up into tens of millions or hundreds of millions of small calls that are related. So you need a pretty powerful identity system to handle everything that's going on here. Absolutely. You want me to stop drawing? You can stop drawing now. I'm, I'm comfortable now with where we are. Right? And, and I want to stress, right, this is still something that's relatively new. Right. It's only leading edge companies that are really moving down and starting to do this. But it gives them a very, very powerful architecture to be able to share knowledge, information, and services within uh, their own enterprise. So people would hear this referred to as microservices. Microservices. Got it. With that, I think we killed another topic. Cool. Yeah. Enjoy. <laughs>